What's up, Giggler? Carrie, fix the Wi-Fi. Manifest that shit. We can't be managed. <laughs> I mean, the day just got away from me. What is up, my gnarly gigglers? It starts with a G, so it counts. It does count. Did you know that? Um, Not until you said it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we're back in the studio, a.k.a. Paige's apartment. This is, we're, we have a YouTube. I keep forgetting. We have hard launch YouTube. It's out there. It's happening. We also have tour dates. There's eight tickets left in D.C. I just counted. Oh, my God. So you guys better get them. And then New York, we have a couple tickets left for the third show. Okay. Boston. Guys, we have a we're doing a whole different show. So if you s- saw the other ones, get tickets for the upcoming one. And then um, what else? Just general housekeeping. Our merch. Oh. That was the best launch we've ever had. Incredible. People love hating men. And it, I love that. It turns <laughs> out hate is in. <laughs> and negativity and being sexist towards men is, is on trend. Uh, yeah. And I'm here for it. Yeah. Um, I do have a slight bone to pick with you. Oh, no. I've morphed into you. I didn't want to say anything, but I was like, she looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at you, and I was trying to be like, in what world is Paige DeSorbo doing an on-camera shoot and not putting together the cutest look? And then I realized that you look just like me, <laughs> and we're the same vibe. You don't even have a touch of makeup on. Not a stitch. I haven't showered in two days. Mm-hmm. I... um. I, I do smell a little bit. It all started I didn't say with when like you pasta <laughs> you put a hex on me of some sort mm-hmm. and you ruined my nails. Yes. And so from ruining my nails to now that I I'm fully on camera, <laughs> I have no makeup on, my hair is greasy, I couldn't even I just thought of the Mean Girls part of the movie where she's like, hot body, <laughs> oh. perfect nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking down. What are those bars she makes her eat? What are oh, the yeah, name the of those? Cal- bars. You've literally calteen barred me. <laughs> like that's no, what you've done. Would I argue to me. that you just care less what people think of you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I care a lot. <laughs> oh, you're just giving up. Me and my therapist talk about it every week. <laughs> So, like, so this is depressed. just defeat. Welcome to <laughs> depression. <laughs> We're both depressed, but you know what? We're gonna giggle through it. <gasps> that's what life's about. But it is probably one of the most exciting weeks of all weeks. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's getting married on Friday. Dude, I feel like getting married is so anti-feminist. <laughs> Why? Are you taking Des's last name? No. Really? No, because... I thought you were hyphenating. No, no. You're just staying Hannah Burner. Just Hannah Burner. I'm not, like, becoming part of him. I'm me. He's him. We're two individuals starting a life together. Okay, question. But when you bring your little... Their last r- names are Burner. <laughs> are they? I'm joking about it, but I'm yeah. trying to see if maybe... Like, I just don't... I don't understand it. Why do they... Well, I know we live in a patriarchal society, but I'm trying to break the patriarchy down. One little toddler at a time okay what about one's burner one's bishop <laughs> <laughs> i think his bishop is actually such a, a good great name. last name it sounds regal hannah bishop i have the same initials hannah bishop <laughs> she's a she looks down i think you. you should think about it <laughs> then i have to change my instagram handle for a third time oh my god wait you hard launched your new instagram handle <laughs> i went to tag you in something and i was like what the I was fuck like, is being burns being burns is dead she can't come to the <laughs> phone right now she's done i just feel like being burns i created that when i just started an instagram like i yeah. was private and i was posting you know the filtered um portraits y- yeah with a border the borders and then it got to the point, someone searched my name in Texas, mm-hmm. and I didn't come up. And I realized, like, if I'm Hannah Burner, it comes right up. Yeah. And so it was kind of businessy, and also I feel like a lot has changed in the last, in years past, and I felt like I want to be Hannah Burner. Um, speaking of that, Instagram straight up, like, shadow banned me. No. Because of our merch. No. And said that I was, like... <laughs> Spewing hate speech. Okay, so my manager said, do hate, like, H, 
eight instead of writing out hate because yeah they sometimes will ban you but i didn't even write anything it was just in like the picture so i had are you shadow man yeah so I had to like You cannot be shadow banned before my wedding. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like every bride makes every single like inconvenience <laughs> and then dies it to their wedding? <laughs> like I could have said that <laughs> like I bought the wrong shampoo and you would have been like <laughs> before my wedding. How could you do this to me? Wait. <clears throat> we need a there's a joke. I'm that, o- I'm on it. Yeah, you're dealling with it? Okay, yeah. cuz I have a friend um, girl with no job, Claudia Oshry, who yeah. constantly said she shadow banned on TikTok, but we decided she's just really bad at TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's funny to like put on a photo and like it gets not a lot of likes, and you're, you're like, like whatever, I'm shadow, shadow ban- banned. I'm literally shadow banned. So sometimes girlies just say you're shadow banned. If but it- honestly, the break is nice. You know, I've got a lot of. Like, you still have like a million followers that follow you. It just. What, when people search you to, like, say mean things in your photo, they can't find you? That sounds like a blessing. Yeah, it sounds great. You have yeah. to click see more. Honestly, not Everything happens Instagram. for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> what you're telling yourself. Yeah. I just need it back by my... I need it back by, by your wedding. wedding. Um, I'm, I'm working on it. I actually have a bone to pick with you <laughs> oh. if we're doing this. <laughs> I already t- told you about it, but I just have to address it because the gigglers <laughs> blew my DMs up. When we were promoting our shows, which, like, <laughs> thank you. I love how good you are at promoting. But you... Put it over your face. Choose to put the link <laughs> over my face. <laughs> and it's, f- like, a full, beautiful photo of me and her dressed up professional photographer. <gasps> takes the link. And it's almost like she purposely was like, mm, this is off brand for me. And her face is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and then the funny thing is, at first I was like, what was her thought process? And then I was like, Oh, she didn't have one. <laughs> there was no like evil, meticulous like. You oh. know when you're like, I have to post this. Like, okay, yeah. link. There we did. A swipe up. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Click. And then I did go back and I did notice it, but it had already been off. It was up. funny because it looked very <laughs> deliberate. Like it was like from my chin to my eyebrow, just like you're done, <laughs> you're done. Wait, you picked this bone with me last week. You're re-bringing it up. Did I? Yeah. No, I think it was in the notes, but I didn't really bring it up. You literally have been having amnesia. What? Who are you? And why are you in my <laughs> apartment? <laughs> um, not before your wedding. I do have to say, it is wedding week. Stassi also is having her wedding week. Yes. And there's actually some drums. Because what would life be without a little drums? We love a little drums. Taylor Strucker is like one of my best friends. She was at my bachelorette party. I invited her to my wedding. And yep. she goes, oh my God, crazy. I'm actually going to be in Roma. <laughs> She's doing the officiating. officiating of the wedding. And I was like, okay, that sounds like kind of important. So Taylor's missing the wedding because she's officiating Stassi's. I texted her the other day and said, have so much fun at Stassi's wedding. And she texted me back and said, if the Salami Squad doesn't FaceTime me, I will be really pissed. So we're going to have to make Becca FaceTime <laughs> Taylor during the <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> the girls in the bachelorette are still talking and still I, vibing. I actually, I was telling Craig this the other day. Randomly, the Bachelorette group chat will just pop off. Pop but off. only for like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's funny, funny, funny. Won't We're talk done. to each other for a week. Mm-hmm. And I love it. Like, I get excited when I see someone from Burner's Bitches <laughs> has popped up on my phone. I'm like, what could we be getting into today on a Tuesday at 4 p.m.? I do have to say Cheech <laughs> Partied in Miami with Marcelo, <laughs> and then Sierra went out with Haley. <laughs> wait, wait. Like, when did Sierra and Haley go out? I like a random night at two a.m. They sent me a photo, and I was like so happy that Sierra is like hanging out with. I love that people that I'd known for years, and that they get along. Not one of those girls has asked me to hang out. Interesting. <laughs> You, That's okay. I hang out with you. Because you're turning into me. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't ha- they didn't hit me up. They was like, <laughs> they don't even ask her if she's home. <laughs> yeah, we don't. But that's good. Um, anyway, yeah. So wedding prep is something people don't, t- people don't talk to you about. And if you Google it, like, what do you do before your wedding? There's like, Are you saying like week before? Or you're saying night before? Like what? Like what weeks you- before. Because okay. y- you know, like weddings are annoying because they make, they make you feel like you have to look the best you've ever looked on yeah. that day. So girls will starve themselves. Girls will like 
you want your face to be perfect. God forbid there's a pimple. You want your nails to be perfect. Actually, I remember when Claudia was getting married. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I remember from her wedding prep, mm-hmm. like, because I was wa- used to watch all of her stories for her wedding. She said she drank so much water before so that her skin would glow. Yeah, and people was, do. And I've never forgot it. People do wild <laughs> things. So I started Googling it and there's like, you know, goop is like, oh, like you have to get a sauna massage and then have like lightning hit you from a <laughs> bottle. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> like it's an unrealistic shit. Wait, goop totally would bottle lightning. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're like, this is $5 million. Get it for Christmas. <laughs> but it's so worth it. Your pores, they're going to look so small. So I, I try to do a realistic thing worth. Three weeks ago, after all my traveling, I got a facial. And I got, like, a hardcore facial. Like a, yeah. Like okay. an Eastern European lady, I swear to God. Like, she was picking. She was poking. <laughs> Paige. You were I in looked pain. at her. She looked at me. She goes, I give no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> and she meant it. That's what you want for your facial. And I was like, this is going to be fucking worth it. Take all my money. And she was like, okay, you have to leave with this. I recommend this. The sunscreen and this. And I was like, just put it on my card. I trust you. You have really good skin, though, to begin with. It's funny because I feel like you literally rub your face with dirt. <laughs> you, like, I've never seen you have a pimple. Not once. I used to have pimples. Now it's more like I'll get the menstrual stuff, whatever. Then I was like, I'm trying. I'm not really doing anything else. However, tomorrow's Tuesday. My wedding's Friday. I'm getting a spray tan. Okay. And getting my nails did. Okay. And for nails, I'm doing white. Yep. And then in little gold letters on my ring finger, I'm putting H and D. <gasps> That's cute. I thought of it myself. <laughs> That's so cute. I'm a fake. Are you doing? Are you doing fake nails? Like, are you doing? Yeah. Because I didn't want to risk my nails breaking. Yeah. I'm not so doing, doing I'm like extensions. Tips. I'm doing tippies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have an attitude on my wedding day. Yeah, you are. Someone, multiple people have called me very chill. And I told them, I said, I'm not like, would you call me a chill person? Yeah. Chill as in like, certain. in the grand scheme of things, you're pretty chill. Yeah. In <laughs> certain <laughs> situations. I will pop off. Yeah, you have an opinion. And yes. An opinion. Yes, opinion. <laughs> it's not opinion. <laughs> <laughs> like a filet mignon? Yeah. My opinion. Mm, yes. Rare. So I told her, I was like, it's funny, I am very chill in this, but things that I care about, I'm unchill. And I think we just have to normalize your wedding day not being the greatest day of your life. But I think that has to start at a very young age with our daughters. Because I was wondering yeah, why we're I don't... Too, we're too far. You're too gone. far. Oh. You're too far gone. I'm My gone. thing is, I feel like this is like a family party that like I happen to like... Be the center of attention at. Yeah, but I don't like attention that I don't earn. That's weird. I love all of it. Like, I want to <laughs> be like... The people are against me, and I win them over with a good joke. Like, I want yeah, that kind of attention. I get like, that. I, like, I won the match. I earned it. Where, like, happy birthday. I fucking hate that attention. Okay, so what are some things that, like, the week of your wedding oh, or, yeah. like, in preparation to your wedding where you have not been chill about? I was like, was there anything the that you were like, this, I know what I want for this? So I wanted a film portion. photographer to come too. And then I was like, no, let's not do it. Okay. Like, I've gotten actually more chill as we go on. I just don't want any you're worry. you're tired. I'm exhausted. Because <laughs> I was like, like, oh, sh- I, have to get, I have to get a place for her to stay. And I, and I, and I was just like, no, let's not Are do that. Are you going to throw a bouquet? Yeah. Okay. Are we going to cheat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, see, are you too tall? Go in the back. Go in the back, you tall bitch. <laughs> <laughs> They're long ass model arms. Go in the back. I'm like, I go, Becca, hold Sierra <laughs> down. <laughs> hold that bitch down. Set I'm a like pick. I'm running through the door and you're like throwing it long. You're like, I don't know. No, I, literally, I literally call a play. I go, go left, go right. I turn, I chuck it all the way to the left and you're there. We're literally doing football. And there's plays. no chance you're going to mess with your long ass fingers. Not you're just far. like, stab it. <laughs> And then you just glare at Craig, and Craig's going to be, like, fucking, like, practicing his golf swing with Des in the corner, oblivious. What's with guys practicing their golf swing all the time? Like, not in golf settings? Yeah, like, (laughs) men just get together, and they just start doing it, and then they all do it together. And I'm like, what is this weird, like, mating dance you guys are doing? Craig is actually, Des is going to literally 
come when he hears this. Craig is like redoing his backyard right now. Like he re just redid his kitchen and like I talk about not being chill. <laughs> I've taken over like full creative direction. Like I've he's pushed back on a few things and then his mom was just here and so I told her and she like, did and the so kibosh. She, yes, and she was like but Paige you know what really you're doing? wants and I was like what's it called when you it's like what birds do or what animals do when you something get something torturous <laughs> when you get to waterboarding a man's place you're like it's peeing all over kind of you're kind like of marking your territory yeah. but there's a word for it but that's what i did when i first met des i got to his house i said get a dumpster i made him <laughs> throw away like yeah. literally everything yeah and so he i loved did too it. And then I like started buying pillows. That's a weird thing. Yeah. You have a great source for I, pillows. Yeah, that's the one thing. I can't buy any decorative pillows or I feel like. You're cheating. Yeah, I will get broken up with. You're cheating. So him. that's the one. I've given him that. But I've made him throw away like so many things. I bought a new bed frame, got new light, like redid his whole bedroom. Yep. And in his backyard. You're literally marking your territory. Yeah, peeing all over South Leg Carolina. Up peeing. Yeah. Just squatting. Yep. <laughs> um, just drunk squatting. <laughs> in the middle of the living room. Just pulling out my long brown hairs and placing them places. <laughs> yeah. um, clogging his drain. That's a great way to mark your territory. <laughs> just clog it. So he's putting a putting green in the backyard. I'm obsessed with that for him. And I think it's so cute and adorable. It's so cute because you'd be like, where's Craig? And then yeah. he's like cursing because he can't get the putt in yeah it's just like you have they he, he owns this house <laughs> he spent so much money to redo it and i'm like that's your area yeah you this stay is there mine now <laughs> oh my god it's so funny you take over all his closets it's yeah. great but then it's funny because you then you leave <laughs> after changing, you're like okay i'm going back to new york where i live and then he's just sitting there like in all your stuff it's like what do i do with 25 forks which one do i use <laughs> Matching like, this is a salad fork. <laughs> What's the aesthetic of the house? What would you call it? So it's actually very exciting for me because it's the complete opposite of like what I would do in like my New York City apartment. Yeah. So I'm kind of doing it like a contemporary farmhouse <gasps> sitch. I'm upset. But like there will be accents of like more contemporary. Yeah, like I course. do show him some things and I'm like, do you like this? And he's like, it's kind of more New Are York. You and I'm like, you're at, right. The the taste that it takes to put together an outfit is different than the it's taste. It's fucking hard. Are you, you are, what inspo are you using or where? So there's actually a website. It's called Lulu in Georgia. Oh. It's very expensive, but they give really good ideas. So like I've been going on that website. I did want to get like my, his, mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I did want to get his bed frame from there, which I think I will. But like I got an idea for like the lights I want to do like by the bedside table so i just went on amazon mm -hmm. typed in that vibe so it's amazon really has so many good things no amazon is everything you guys have you heard of amazon it's really good i feel like i have heard of it before I've i love ordered. when your amazon ad comes up and i'm like oh they're good <laughs> i'm like yes my friend <laughs> um I, I, des and i would get into it because i would say i'm gonna go to my room mm -hmm. and he'd be like our room in his house <laughs> yeah. in west ham's like oh, i'm gonna go to my room and he goes <laughs> whose room and they go, my room. I think that there is a thing to like. If I let you have sex with me in that room, it's my room now. Yeah. Like in Craig's guest room, I've like put all my clothes in that closet. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if there's no one else, if there's no guest staying there. Like that's my room. Yes. Like and I might need to go there and just sit for a minute. <laughs> and I think we also from reality TV are little PTSD about like choosing rooms. So we're like, just give me the fucking room. <laughs> Give me the fucking room. Wait, that's so true. Just give me the room with no I'm drums. Like, I'm like, wait, am I allowed to sleep here without someone like wanting to murder me? <laughs> I know. Someone gonna you're, kill me in my sleep. You're like, can I sleep with both eyes closed? <laughs> Why do you think I always have a roommate? <laughs> you might want true. To murder me. I w I found something on TikTok that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. And I hope I find it. Um, but it's basically this guy who came up with things that look at my screenshots that are considered toxic that he thinks are not toxic wow is this is this like in a relationship or just like in general life toxic traits that i've convinced myself aren't toxic in general great number one and his name is brett newsty n-e-u-s-t-y okay he said talking shit not toxic not toxic everybody talks shit okay anyone who goes i like that person they talk shit 
Then what are you talking? Do you ever see? What do you talk? <laughs> do you ever see those memes that it's like, find your circle of friends that talk about ideas and places <laughs> and not people. And I'm like, losers. <laughs> No, they Scroll. say, like, the best people in the world talk about, don't talk about people, they talk about events, plans, and, like, global warming. And I'm like, boring? But, like, the adrenaline when one of your girlfriends sits down and is like, oh, my God, wait till you hear this. I start convulsing. I do like, know that gossip me. is, I do feel kind of guilty sometimes. So, in my elder, more mature age... I gossip with fewer people. Agreed. So I have a much small, I have like two or three like hardcore gossipers and then I'm like an angel with everyone else. And then I try not to be the one who starts it. It's just her. Yeah. You know, like she had a really tough go. (laughs) (laughs) The best is when you're talking about someone and then someone finally says like, but you know, it does annoy me. And you're like, Okay, I fucking hate this person. (laughs) And you realize you don't have to pretend anymore. And honestly, you have to talk shit because you don't realize who you really vibe with until you know things that they don't like. Because people, a lot of people like tacos. If I was friends with everyone who liked tacos, I would have too big of a friend group. But how many people don't like... Craig actually hates tacos. Craig's eating habits is like a whole <laughs> podcast that we're going to do in the future because it's what problematic. what about the moment when like you're talking to a friend and you both mutually know a person mm-hmm. and they're like, oh my God, do you know like Stephanie? We always like rag on Stephanie. Stephanie. My best friend from high school's name is Stephanie and she has texted me about this. <laughs> she's like, is there a subconscious <laughs> fight? Yeah, she's that like, we're why are you guys doing this to me all the time? It's just so such like, a funny name. When one of your girlfriends is like, oh my, or not like your real girlfriend, but you like, you just met her. It's like, yeah. oh my God, you know Stephanie? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I do. And there's three seconds and that's it where you no. know whether or not like, What's another name? I can't think of Kara G- like Stephanie. Kara. Like, and you know in that three seconds. Yeah, they will make a face because they're either like, like, you no, no. Yeah. When they go like, oh, you know they're about to be, isn't she just, yes. oh. Yeah, you're like the best. But if they don't go, oh, and they're just like, oh, you know? And you're like, yep. And then. And then you're best, you're yeah. literally and best friends. And then you're like, so what's, you're like, well, don't what's the deal? She's like, well, she did sleep with all my ex-boyfriends. And you go, oh my God, me too. Yeah. Okay, leading me to my next one. Toxic traits that I convince myself aren't toxic. Being fake. I'm f- so fake. This is the thing <laughs> with being fake. Do, should you, if you're not fake, that means you're just going around being an asshole to most people. <laughs> Like, that means you're just running around telling people how you really feel about them? Yeah, no. No, I'm all about, I think I'm about keeping the energy as good as it possibly can be. And I realize I'm fake most of my life unless someone starts something. It's, fake is also such a, like, harsh word. I feel like, no, like, you have acquaintances. Yeah. And you're lovely to them. You're, like cordial and you're lovely and great and like i'm a little bit nice unless you piss me off then i will like full-on fight you but with like your real friends yeah like you're your real it's self. true like i feel like i would i'll call you out if i feel like you're not being like yourself because yeah. i'm worried i'm like are yeah. you okay you're zoning out yeah or, like you're being weird yeah because you want to be raw with your friends but with other people that's why it's exhausting to hang out with other people because you have to act like you're not a neanderthal <laughs> <laughs> like you have to like eat normally and you have to be like ah! like laugh at every joke you have to hold so many things in have, have you ever laid on a couch with someone who's like not really your friend oh my god yeah you have to like i don't even you know how to, like, to sit <laughs> do you remember when we got to our reunion in summer house and you were like why are you sitting like that i go how does what do i do with my hands and you literally put me in a position and then you're like okay now now you can cry and i was like ah! <laughs> <laughs> you literally forgot how to sit <laughs> I'll never I was like in this dress. You're like, you what told do I me to like go diagonal with the such, legs. You said it in such a like scared I was way. Scared. You're like, what do I do with my legs? <laughs> I can't have people making fun of how I'm sitting and my entire well being and life <laughs> as they tear me apart. <laughs> oh God. I I hate, hate mm-hmm. eating when you first meet a guy. Like you have to pretend that you don't just like shovel food in your yeah. mouth or whatever your habits are or cravings are. You have to pretend you like eat normal things. Yes. Where then you reach the point 
and that's when you put on that good love weight where you guys yeah. are, like i mean the fact that craig just has takeout knocking on the door throughout the entire day for no rhyme or reason is adorable i realized that like when craig and i first started dating i kind of started like testing him when it came to like normal eating mm. like at midnight i'd be like what would you do if I ordered a pizza just to see his reaction? Be like, Not wouldn't it be crazy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would it be insane and if, like, I've, like a I've pizza. been with guys that have been like, what? It's midnight. And Craig was like, if you don't get half pepperoni, like, we're done. And I was like, I'm obsessed with you. This is the thing. When we say we like guys who don't have a six pack, it's not that we don't think six packs are attractive. It's right. the lifestyle that comes with it. That means he's got. Can you please stop coughing while I'm Sorry. talking? <laughs> <laughs> Just COVID in my not mouth. Not before my wedding. Not before my wedding. You can't cough in my mouth before my wedding. So, like, when you date these, like, six pack dudes, they are the worst no it's too hard they like they're counting they're calories being fake. they're <laughs> so <laughs> fake like you're be yourself fake. you want that garlic knot you want that garlic knot eat what do it. you hate about yourself that you're not gonna eat that garlic knot i agree there's such a fine line between like being healthy and like wanting to look good and then like i can't eat this and I'm, if like, you're no. both type a like that's good but it's hard to be like a type a person with someone who like likes to sleep in I feel like Craig and I are both type C. D. Yeah. Like <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, this is funny. Toxic traits I convince myself aren't toxic. Eavesdropping. Hold on. My mom. Mom. <laughs> can't do that. <coughs> I know it's just Mother's Day, but. <sighs> like, we're filming uh, something that we could get nominated for an Emmy. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Can I just do something? I apologize to the Academy for what just <laughs> happened. Seriously, it's so unprofessional. It's. Okay, what was Eavesdropping. the Eavesdropping. This is... Not toxic. This is not toxic at all. If you're not eavesdropping, you don't know what's happening in the world. You don't like to learn? You don't... <laughs> you're you're not going to understand your surroundings? <laughs> have you ever... You have been on a date or been with your girlfriend where you just said, I'm going to need you to shut the fuck up for about three minutes because this couple next to me is in the most awkward first date and it's getting really bad and I need to hear how it happens if i go out to eat and there isn't someone to eavesdrop <laughs> on i'm upset like i'm writing a yelp review that i'm like then you're just stuck with your own thoughts yeah, which I'm is just like, oh uncomfortable my God. then you have no, to come up with conversation with the person across from you there's so many times where i've been like Shh. doesn't i have fully on like he'll kind of smirk and i'm like what is it and he'll be like right and then i'll like listen like full t we're not even experiencing each other we're just yeah. experiencing around us but eavesdropping is also important because like if you don't know the shit that people are talking around you you really miss out on a lot of good stuff i was getting on a plane just re saturday i was flying from atlanta to albany to see my mother for mother's day because i'm such a good daughter mm -hmm. and the couple sitting next to me i was like listening to them for a little bit and they're redoing their house we love i was so excited for them so proud. <laughs> fully invested yeah, fully invested she says like, like a certain cabinet and you're like Someone who's redoing a home. <laughs> I was very interested. Because I was like, oh, I wonder where they're shopping from. Mm -hmm. Full fight. Full blown fight. She kept showing him things and he was just uninterested. <gasps> and he just was finally like, I don't know. I'd have to see it all together. And like, why do we have to do this right now? And they just started losing it. First thing I did was text Craig and be like, you're never going to guess. <laughs> <laughs> with a couple next to me is fighting about and like what i was just gonna not listen i mean that is pure come on that's actual reality tv yeah and that, that was me being real and that that's moment. also when you <laughs> they had a tiktok where you start playing on your phone leave get out by jojo <laughs> during the fight <laughs> <laughs> get out leave right now it's the end of you and me they say if someone's fighting next door you just like blast that to be like end that shit um Couples fighting is hilarious, but first dates is my That's your thing. niche. My niche. Some would even say my fetish. That's what really gets when you When they're like, because it reminds you why you don't want to. See, I get, I get nervous. When they go, you know, because I just, I love being able to know it's a first date because they're always like, y so what kind of, like that. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, um. Yeah, I, I go there sometimes. Their voices are way higher the, than they are in real life. The, your first date, my pitch is so high. and then They say if you're uncomfortable, your voice naturally goes higher. And you're giggling at things that aren't funny. Yeah. And you're just talking very, like, generalities. 
Like it really Great is word. like a bad <laughs> generalities. Never said that word that in my life. Like you're from Clula. <laughs> generalities. Is that our new word? Okay. But here's the other thing though. I used to go on first dates and I'm so aware of my surroundings that I used to mm. get nervous that people were listening to my first date. Mm. So I need to get some of that because I'll be like in an elevator full of people and just like continue whatever because I just don't care. Like I don't care. Yeah. As long as it's not something like that I need to keep a secret. I don't care that there's people around. If anything, I brought some entertainment to their day. Well, I'll be with someone that I could tell is uncomfortable that See, I'm talking I'm about I'm the something. complete opposite. I feel like I've done this with you where I'll be like, and then my pussy had like a cottage cheese <laughs> coming out of it. And I was like, this and is like, not hang normal. Up the phone, hang up the phone. Hang up <laughs> the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I will always, I had like one line that I've said to so many boyfriends and I've just looked up at them and been like, we are in public and you are mortifying me. See, that would mortify me if someone said that to me. Okay, well then don't act a fool. Are we in a fight? <laughs> are we in a fight? No, I also love momentum in conversations. Like if I'm like, you know how I'm performative with my conversations. Yeah. I hate it being interrupted by an elevator. So I'm like, we're ready. We're about to hit yeah, the climax. I need to keep going it. with this story. And every now and then, but that is because my you're a method actor, and so when you're yes, telling, <laughs> I'm Jared Leto. When you're telling a story, you are you have brought yourself back yeah, to I that moment. I can't get out <laughs> of that moment just because we wanted an elevator. Oh my god! Also, my pet peeve slash why I love Des is he like <laughs> loves loves small talk. No, no, like the kind of like older guy like loves a neighborhood chat like we'll be at a diner you know what's crazy is that shop. craig and des haven't the met same. and they are they have very similar quality craig but we'll talk to anyone really at any time. cute but he'll be like he'll hear something he's like yeah what's going on with the building over there how long yeah. has it been going like things no. that i would never care about the, in west hampton he was talking about like the waves and they call it like there's a certain word for the wave and how like big the waves are. Okay. And he was like talking about it all day with people. And I was like, I've never even heard this word. <laughs> and why do we care about it so much? And now I can't even, oh my God. The anyway, but yeah, Des will be like so into the neighborhood gossip. Like he's I like, love that. Oh, this guy got, and, and then you see these people like love him. And I think I'm as likable or more likable than Des, but <laughs> I hate small talk. Like I, I literally like, get me out of this conversation. No. But he just like flows so naturally with these people. And I think I, I because you want to know what he's a genuinely happy person. You know what? I asked him, I said, do you have anxiety or depression or both? And he goes, I have anxiety. I don't have depression. And I go, and that's what differentiates us because I have both. <laughs> and you're like, touche. I think I think that it's probably the same with Craig, you think? Yes. Craig does not have depression. You can't have, have two depressed people. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> like, hey, I'm the depressed one, okay? So figure out something else. <laughs> Let me have one thing. Craig definitely has anxiety, but Craig has it sporadically. You know where we're perpetually in it and there's yeah. just like some days that are like we're not as <laughs> yeah. anxiety ridden, but it's like it's still there. Yep. Craig is like sporadic, but he's not de he's not depressed. Yeah. He's like happy. He wakes up smiling and I'm like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> How do you do that? Yeah, it does has been jet lagged so he's been waking up at 5 a.m <laughs> and then he falls asleep at 8 p.m the other night i had seven hours to myself <laughs> that's nice though i literally like it was like mom and dad are in bed like me and romeo were like running around i was like eating shit yeah. i was like putting on anything i wanted filming tiktoks it was wild i've actually been having such bad anxiety recently that i can't sleep <sighs> No, the opposite. I've been waking up so early and I'm just like, <gasps> why would God do this to me? That is, that's it's the, the world trying to tell you something. Yeah, it's like the final straw. Yeah, when anxiety, your body will tell you yeah. like when anxiety starts waking you up. Because the sad thing about that is when you're depressed and this is our mental health moment. Every moment of the day feels so long. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. when you're really in it. It's exhausting to exist because you're so in your head the whole time. Mm -hmm. So sleep is the only time to escape like yourself. Like retrieval, yeah. Exactly. So with that said, I'm I'm glad that you're up to like live more, but now it's finding ways to make that existence more pleasurable. Like to the point. 
Oh my god, that's <laughs> a little sexual. <laughs> and now is our sponsor for <laughs> vibrators. Vibrators. Um. A sucking vibrator is anyway. No, seriously, it's it's debilitating because one, I don't want to be up, but I'm. It's not like I'm just waking up and I'm laying there. Like I have to then get up. To be like, I gotta like get shake this. I mean, I only I go to the couch. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I yeah. have to get out of the bed and like. Right the now, one day Craig called me and he was like, "Are you coming back? Like, where are you?" Yeah, and I was like, "I'm just downstairs." And he's like, "Okay, well, stop being weird." I've been getting anxiety because I've been having trouble going to sleep. Yeah. So, the bed to me is giving me anxiety to like go to the bed because the I've bed gone is gone through that because the bed is a have place been, of like bad thoughts. I've been sleeping on the couch. Yep. Yeah. So I fall asleep on the couch, Des wakes me up at four, and he goes, babe, what are you doing? Yeah. He goes, lives his day, I go to the bed. He wakes you up when he's getting up. Yep. And then you go it's to It's literally the like college when, like, your friends are going to class and yeah. you're coming home from the party. And you're like, what's up, bro? And we, that's why I'm basically single. <laughs> you are. <laughs> literally don't and know I this do man. long distance. We're single. But what Des would agree with and why our relationships are so relationships when you spend too much time with the person and too routine oriented you do become like siblings yes and that's <gasps> what you have to avoid and i read that recently somewhere wait so did i it's probably tiktok <laughs> it was like the absolute worst thing that can happen to your relationship is not the fighting mm-hmm. not the like whatever it's mm-hmm. becoming too routine and being siblings yeah because siblings are different than best friends you want to be best friends like it's okay to go like a week or two not having sex but, but you don't want to have fun. sex with your sibling no your sibling you're just like we're family we're and you want to be like here. you want to like poke that person and like yeah. tease them basically yeah and it's okay to be like teasy or whatever in a flirty way i just it's like why you shouldn't fart all over them that's sibling behavior Yes. Which, like, in my past, I've done that before when I'm trying to get the guy out of the relationship. <laughs> and that's I toxic. <laughs> that that's is toxic, toxic, my friend. That is toxic so ass. So now, yeah, actually, I will pat myself on the back for that one because Craig doesn't even know I go to the bathroom. But that is why the patriarchy is still in charge because in the time that you're figuring out full strategic like game plans to shit it's without really him knowing more him like he gets more like he doesn't want me to know that he goes to the bathroom we were just away and he was like i'm gonna go downstairs to the lobby and i was like for what and he was like i just have to go down to the lobby and i was like craig i know that you have to take a shit you can do it in the hotel room wait you like, guys are like fresh but he doesn't he like doesn't want to where S- someone you guys are gonna go on a trip and someone's gonna get like a stomach bug and that's gonna be the break and like if we're in a hotel room i make them get in the shower turn the shower on and turn on music because you just never know and i don't want wait so while he's in the shower you poop <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if it smells <laughs> it's it was in a different area oh it's okay that scared me because that's what we used to do <laughs> <laughs> that's what we, we literally did, it in did. The same room. We did it in the same room because if we, if We'd I was be like these people are not. If I was pooping and you were in the shower, no one could hear us talking. It was the one time for us to be like, "What the <laughs> fuck is happening? <laughs> Where are we? Like, where's my mom? Oh my god. Okay, toxic traits that I convince myself aren't toxic: the silent treatment. Wow, I'm really happy he said that because that's my go-to. Is that your go-to? Yeah. I think that it's good in a way it actually does remind me of reality TV for a second because actually Lauren Conrad was talking about reality TV on her experience of the hills. Someone told me about it. Yeah. I think it was on TikTok probably. And she said how it's really difficult because normally when you get into a fight or an argument with a friend, you have time to process it. You have time to reflect. You you can speak and talk to them when you choose. But with reality TV, because... filming is money you have to address it immediately yeah and you're like i don't actually don't even know how i feel about this but I'm you have to either apologize you have to not apologize you have to have an argument like you're constantly on other people's timelines have to make decisions about your feelings and in some ways it's cool because you're always have to like take action but sometimes you haven't processed it and you'll look and you'll be like oh that was because i was in a fight two two minutes earlier and i was forced to do something right after right to like have a storyline right where I feel like the silent treatment is a good way to like you don't know what you want to say yet yeah but you know you're not happy yeah and you want to also see how they react to the silent treatment and it's almost like 
it's better torture because some people don't deserve to talk to you yet. <laughs> Craig doesn't like, I don't know if he doesn't know the word for silent treatment. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't go full silent, but he'll be like, you're being mysterious again. Are you mad? <laughs> he calls you mysterious. Wait, that's like, like a compliment. I'm like, thank you so much. He goes, you're so aloof and mysterious. <laughs> Your Scorpio dark eyes. Yeah. And I'm just like, I am being mysterious because I haven't decided how I feel about what what you just said or what just happened and when I do I'll let you know and also I don't think the silent treatment is toxic when something fucked up happened and you are responding to it like you're allowed to be upset when something bad happens to you or if someone crossed a boundary you know what I mean yeah and you're also allowed to just be like also what I realize is the silent treatment is definitely what I deal with like with friend groups or people I'm just, I don't care to fight with anyone. I'll be like, okay, I'm just not going to deal with them anymore. Yeah, and people will be like, well, that's immature. Why don't you just say it? And it's like, well. Sometimes I see sides of people that I'm like, you know what? I don't, I'm not, this isn't going to be helpful to anyone. Where with reality TV, you're forced to deal with it. Bring back the silent treatment. (laughs) They're like, Paige, what do you think? And you're just like. a television show where just no one talks. No one's talking. Um. Okay, last one. Toxic traits that I convinced myself aren't toxic. Lying. Lying? (laughs) (laughs) Murdering someone. (laughs) I guess white lies are okay. I've just, here's the thing. I've never known, like, okay, what is the line where it's, like, not a white lie anymore? Ooh, good question. Because have you ever met that, there's always that one girl in high school that that just, like, lies, lies, lies. Mm -hmm. And lies about shit that, like. So stupid. Yeah, you're like, okay, you had French toast for breakfast, not scrambled eggs. You don't need to lie about that. We don't care. Yeah. So there's those kind of lies. I think white lies mean. What if I define white lies as lies that will actually, like, help a situation? Like. If someone's like really stressed about something, there's nothing you could do about it to give them kind of like a lie to make them feel and better. You're like, just don't worry about it. It's whatever. It's gonna be or like you're like when I ask you if my outfit looks good and I can't change it, and you're like, you look like yourself. You look great. <laughs> you look just like you. You would pick that. Yeah. Like it's like kind of a lie, but not. Yeah. Yeah. You're like it looks amazing for you. For you, it's iconic. If you picked it out. Um, well, it's like, well, if you put something on that you love Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't wear it Mm -hmm. and you're like, how do I look? I'm going to be like, you look great. Well, now you you wear what I wear. So where are we? Some weird vortex. I don't know. Like Elon Musk put us in some alternate universe. I'm convinced. Welcome to the messy age. Did you see Elon Musk uh, tweeted, if I mysteriously die, it's nice knowing you. If I he if I die under mysterious circumstances, like, yes, it's been nice knowing you. Is that crazy? What I'm made you think that. of that? <laughs> what made you think that? I don't know. Where are you? Where are you right now? <laughs> Come back. Come back to us. That is so, Elon Musk is a character. Um, yeah. Would you have sex with Elon Musk? No. Have you ever seen him like in an interview? He's almost like too smart to talk to. Yeah. Where you're just like, I think you're an idiot. I saw him on SNL and he wasn't like that. He wasn't that bad on SNL. No, he was pretty good on SNL. It was was pretty good. It was like. I just like having sex with powerful men. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm just like Maria Monroe. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of Marilyn. No, we raced, we talked about before, but I hope you guys watch that documentary. We're going to be have dope documentary soon. (gasps) The documentary I watched, remember I was going to watch the skin one and the nails one. Oh, and yeah. The hair one. Yep. I watched all of them. I watched, I watched the skin one. We're dead. We're, we're done. done. No, we're, do- we're You're done. done. You're no, done. We're done. <laughs> what does the FDA well, do? I'll answer that. Nothing. But basically, we want them to say on the front if it has phthalates <laughs> and uh, yeah. the other thing. Um, and did you not look at all your stuff afterwards? I haven't yet. You're scared. And how crazy that they can put the word fragrance and that can mean everything. Literally anything. Because it's like a secret sauce that you don't have to tell people about. I want, but they shouldn't because people don't know the amount of stuff they put into it. Everyone at the FDA should be fired and you can quote me on that. Because they don't do anything. They're like, well, we can encourage that you don't sell that, but we can't make it mandatory. And then it's like, okay, so then what is your job? It's just weird that, that some things are illegal in Europe. 11,000 things are, like, illegal in Europe, and there's, like, 11 things in America that are illegal to put in 
And, and that's know. insane because it's like, are we different types of humans? Because if someone thinks it should be illegal to humans, it should be worldwide illegal. Right. Our skin don't like have different functions. Right. Like our bodies. Our bodies don't react differently to chemicals. Right. Like we're still going to die. What did you learn from the hair one? So they concentrated it on this one brand. It was called Diva Curl. Yeah. And the brand is still like selling on shelves. For girls with curly hair? For girls with curly hair. And it was making their hair amazing for like the first two months. Then all of a sudden it started like falling out. It like wasn't growing. I feel like I have a friend who did influencer stuff with them. Really? Yeah. All these crazy things to the point where there's one girl on there that's like I haven't had... um, like there has been ringing in my ear for three years now. And she was like, I, my speech is, her speech is delayed. She's got chronic depression. She had like just gotten married or like has been with her boyfriend for, I forget what the actual story was, but she was like, and like, we can't go and do anything because I can't hear and I can't like talk anymore. And I'm so depressed all the time. I can't leave my apartment. So what are you going to put on your hair, skin and nails now? Or just this like. This is why I look the way that I do. <laughs> She's, We've given up. We've <laughs> given up. Given Someone up. was tweeting to me about talcum powder. Be like, how much talcum powder will kill me? Apparently yeah. not. Apparently. Apparently. Apparently not no, that it's much. It's not the talc powder that will kill you. It's the asbestos that grows right with talc powder. So you can have talc powder and like breathe it in. Mm-hmm. And you would be fine, but if asbestos <laughs> did you try that? Happen, no, <laughs> I don't recommend it. But if, but like, but like ninety percent of talc powder has asbestos in it. There's just no way it doesn't. But they say that it doesn't because they test like a very small amount. Sounds like Giggly Squad needs to put out a line of clean. Seriously, I was like talking to my mom about it. She was like Stop. such a mom about it, and she was like, you know what? You literally drink spray tan, so don't even, don't even. <laughs> How dare you sit at the dinner and act like you are all natural all of a sudden? I went to She's like, you will snort anything that says it'll make you tan, so please. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, on Mother's Day? <laughs> I went to an Italian restaurant, and they gave, like, my friend a plastic straw, and my friend joked, like, you know what? I hate to say it, but it's kind of nice to have a plastic straw. It always does the job right. Yeah. And the lady goes, it's crazy. They give you a paper straw, and then for takeout, they have the plastic box, the plastic bag. Everything's plastic, but the straw yeah. that p- gets put in water. And I was like, give that woman a raise because <laughs> no, she has a point. The lady has seriously. a point. And if you watch the documentary, see Spiracy, they say it's really the... Did, that did nothing. Long story short, the straws are the least of our problems. Yeah, um, long story short. I do have a random, a random, like, trend report. Okay. The drink of the summer. What is that? A dirty Shirley. <gasps> Wait, someone was just, who was just talking to me about this? And I was like, I am on board. I was a Shirley Temple girly. When I was 12. I'm going to tell you, also, I'm kind of done with um, I never ha- martinis. Who hurt you? I know. I'm just like. What happened? I'm like not feeling them. I feel like I've gone to places and I've had like consistently two bad ones in a row. And I'm just oh. like, oh, I'm over these. But my, my birthday, I mean, my birthday, my bachelorette. Yeah. The bachelorette oh, like. of the century. It, it was they were good yeah but you're right a couple bad ones and uh, there and are places like, mm. that are hard to make and they i fuck also it up. can't drink tequila anymore that'll 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 happen i'm back i feel like college i drank so much vodka to oh i could kill i couldn't do russia. vodka for like seven years after college and then I could kill russia. <laughs> let's throw you into russia <laughs> <laughs> mm, not great timing. Um, and then, so when I got out of college, I was all tequila. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, if I smell it, I will throw up. So I'm back to vodka. I am doing something fun for my wedding. This is like a little sneak peek. <laughs> they said two signature drinks. <gasps> and I wanted to name it after Butter and Romeo or mm-hmm. two pets. So I'm doing Butter's Bellini, mm-hmm. which is like a peach Bellini. And then Romeo's Martini. And it's espresso martini. Cute. But... Now I'm like, how are you gonna not like espresso martinis on my wedding week? No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like espresso not martinis my before week. my wedding. 
you're quitting before my wedding? I've literally changed my whole personality <laughs> before your wedding. Okay, you're like, I'm dressing like you for this week, and you show up in a fucking wedding dress. Um, I borrow that black dress that you love, that you always wear. Oh my god, yeah. I wear that to your wedding. Oh, my stand-up dress? Yeah. That my, oh, I think my mom's <laughs> burned it. Um, also, nostalgia. I love a tube top, and I'm anticipating tube tops are going to be my aesthetic for the summer. Okay. Like, I kind of love the vibe. You also look great in tube tops. Thank you. I have a long torso, and I sweat profusely, so the fact that I don't have yeah. any cloth near my armpit yeah. frees me like a bird. You Nelly do, Furtado. Your torso is built for a tube top. I hate to say this, but my biggest flex is people see my torso and they go, is that Britney Spears? <laughs> Does she have a long torso? Britney has, is known for her amazingly long torso. <laughs> and someone made fun of my torso in college and I thought it was a bad thing. And then Britney's normalized a long torso. Britney's normalized a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> she has. <laughs> she has. Okay, I also wrote new trend that you sent me. Tape Botox. I sent it to you? I think on TikTok. Oh, where the girls are like pulling their faces back and then putting the makeup on it? Oh, no, no, the no, tape no, no. Botox. Legit tape yes. Botox. Yes. Okay, so there's this new trend going around and I did order it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so is it, do they have sp specific tape for it or just tape in general? I have to look up the name, but there is a specific brand that makes things to put on your forehead mm -hmm. while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. But then there's other people that are like, you could use regular tape and it works the same. It looked like duct tape. Yes. Yeah. And it's supposed to freeze these muscles so that it's harder to like move your face. Is it cause the glue has a kind of toxin in it or talcum powder? <laughs> it's definitely not <laughs> best just add it again <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was at first like oh you're just not moving your i didn't think that fuck it's definitely it. like really it's definitely toxic very toxic like to be putting in your pores whatever the tape is that'll stick yeah that's <laughs> it's, not it's not great not no, great but i'm gonna look at what's inside of the actual brand that like it's called like facey or something i'll find it i'll post it another trend <laughs> that everyone's talking about coastal grandma era have you heard of it? Uh, Are you into yes, it? Tell tell it. the gigglers. Very, I think Diane Keaton in Something's Gotta Give. Cape Cod. She's white. She's ivories. She's tan. Ina She's Garden in the, the Hamptons. Yes. I could see you, because I think you look so good in baggy. You Thank don't do you. it enough. I mean, today you are. <laughs> but um, I feel I like a good coastal grandma top. I coastal with a linen pant a lot when I'm in Charleston. I could see that for you because I'm not a huge color pastel girl. So when I'm down there, I try and keep it whites White. and tans and neutrals. So I, I definitely bring out like a coastal grandma chic. Coastal grandma is just like you are. Your husband's died. You are rich. You don't care to show off for anyone, but you're you, timeless. You're timeless. You're put together, but you want to be loose and comfortable for because yep. you might go to the garden. You might pick some but basil. But you're wearing a trouser because you used to be professional. Yeah. And and you still have that class. Yeah, and you're not you're not trying to get a man. You don't need a man. No. You're not dressing um, in the hoochie trend, such as my bachelorette. Yes. The word hoochie should be brought back. The w yeah, it really should. Um, do you have any front page news? No. I have one thing. <laughs> 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 so Leah McSweeney. Yeah. Because we have to talk about Pete and Kim. Leah McSweeney, Bravo sister, mm -hmm. said she thinks it's creepy that Pete, so early in the relationship, tattooed Kim's children on him. I agree. I think that's very weird. I think the only reason I didn't think it was weird that he got a tattoo like My Girl's a Lawyer is because he's like fully tatted. Yes. Like he doesn't see getting a tattoo as like as permanent as other people and he wouldn't care about like getting it like taken off if he really wanted it. I don't even think he'd really t he'd take that tattoo off if they broke up. Like I feel like he just doesn't care about that. Her children's what did he get of her children? Her, I their names I guess or like their, their initials or something? Yeah, that's weird. But I also guess that he sees his, he gets tattoos and then covers them up like we change <laughs> eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Lipstick. I was going to say socks. I don't know. We were like trying to read each other's minds and <laughs> turns out it's empty. <laughs> There's nothing there. It, I, I think that's sh- weird. I agree. It, it, it was interesting that someone spoke up like for a second outside the like PR machine that is like another perfect, beautiful relationship in the world. Yeah. Kind of being a hater. Okay. Be cause real. I d- <laughs> I'm going to stop being fake for a second. Hashtag real. I'm gonna, I've been fake this whole time. I'm going to stop right now. I... When they showed this clip of her telling Pete to take off the second hat. Yes. And some people were like, this is so cute. And I got like a gut reaction. And I felt Thank I did so not like it. saying it. It wasn't so much for me, her saying take off the hat. It was his reaction to he it. He was uncomfortable. He was uncomfortable. And he got very like he little kid. He got nervous. Kid. He got yeah. very little kid. Like maybe he was just uncomfortable. Like he got in trouble. Like. There was a camera there, and, like, this was a big No, I think you're like, uncomfortable that she, So, for people who don't know, it shows Kim being filmed with him, like, behind the scenes something. And of he her has, trying on her Met Gala dress. Yeah, and he has a hat on, and then he put a second hat on top of it. Being cute, being funny, that is so Pete, a comedian you're dating. Because he was like, I had nowhere to put it. I didn't want to lose it. But he like, also, just, like, you could tell he thought it was yeah. funny. He thought it was cute. And she goes, take off the hat. Yeah. Like, in a very, like... Like Mom you're to son, me like wife. you're embarrassing. Exactly. And you could tell for a second he was vibing in himself. And then he was like, what? And she was like, take off the hat. And he for a second tried to have boundaries with her and was like, why? Yeah. And she goes, because we might use this footage. Which yeah. didn't answer his question as to like, but why? Why yeah. can't the footage have me being goofy? Yeah. And it reminds me of like me with an ex when I'm being myself. Yeah. And them being like, oh, you're really loud back there be yourself to a point yes and then he kind of made a joke like oh this hat caused a lot of drama that whole interaction to me icked me and then the comments were like they're so fucking cute and i'm like we're is that's why you is this why you texted me the other day and you said i'm just gonna say it kim annoys me and i was like (laughs) oh my god you just exposed me having a conversation you just i I also think it was during the met gala when she was like bragging about losing 16 pounds for a dress and people argue like people do that for roles all the time and weddings and like but i argue that you should not do that for weddings I argue that you should not do it to wear a dress for one night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like if you want to, do whatever you but want. But then her trainer was like, but she did it very healthily. I'm like, oh, oh, she was eating during I that? I also, like, I was in the very minority of, like, I didn't think the dress was, like, that crazy icon. Like, yes, is it crazy and amazing that she wore Marilyn Monroe's dress? Of course. But, like... Yeah, the actual dress was iconic on Marilyn, but no one, like, remembers the dress. No one's like, oh, that dress was amazing. But I was like, ah, you kind of wore, like, the same thing last year. Chloe was basically wearing I was about that to dress. S- what do you think happened sleeves? that Chloe is wearing the same dress? Do you think that Chloe picked that dress I a while ago? I think that Chloe's was more like a gold and black moment Mm -hmm. and Kim's was more like nude with crystals. Like, I don't think they even saw it as like a similar vibe, Mm -hmm. but to like a normal person who isn't in that like world every single day. Like we were like, that's the same. That's the same. That's like a guy (laughs) being like, you get your hair cut and you're like, "Mm, someone's different. I don't know. Like it's that comparison. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Kendall was my favorite. Okay, we're going to just wrap this up with some dope docs because okay. shit is happening. I watched the Hillsong documentary on Discovery Plus. I bought it for seven ninety nine. How was that? It was very interesting. Do you know about Hillsong? Yes, we talked about this last time. And I'm senile. I'm fully senile at this point. I'm a goldfish. I have the memory of a goldfish. And you were going to watch the full thing. I did. I watched it. Yeah. No, you, we already talked about this and you told me how they like set people up and Haley Bieber was set with oh, yeah, Justin. But, but I finally like watched the end. So basically it's like a mega church and it's a thin line between mega church and cult. At first you're just like, okay, maybe this, they're just super religious. Like they were telling people you can't like kiss before six months you can't all this you 
like kiss before six months. Yeah, but that was like, so this pastor gets famous. Mm -hmm. This pastor, like really famous. He's like a rock star. He's hanging out with Justin Bieber. He's a rock. Like he's it's like flying private. I'll just never understand when churches have like a ton of money. That's why I love Righteous Gemstones so much. I think it's the best show on television. Righteous Gemstones? Yes, with, um, <gasps> I'm blanking on his name. Pat, do you know his name? The Righteous Gemstone. Um, <laughs> I love he Pat's lives thinking in Charleston. Phrase. You see him around? No. <laughs> Danny McBride. Okay, it's it, him. He's the main character. He plays and a megachurch pastor. He play his dad is the megachurch pastor, and mm -hmm. the kids like all want to take over the megachurch because they want yeah. like all the money, and it's just like a. That's what people argue. They're like, is like, this a business or a religion? And then you'd argue like, if the religion has a good business, it spreads better. But then there's a thin line, because yeah, that this guy started Instagram with the like they designer like mansions, and, and he started like, posting all the designer clothes yeah. the pastors are wearing, and it's like, is this for Jesus? You know who <laughs> is a megachurch pastor? Who? Giselle Bryant's oh, man. Yeah. Is he a mega church one though? Or mega is church. No way. Like superstar. He's like has like tons of followers on Instagram. Like he's a mega church pastor. She looks like a pastor's wife though. Like yeah. she, I think she is one of the <laughs> Most prettiest beautiful. girls I've ever seen in my life. She honestly is incredible looking and her personality also is beautiful. Yeah, she's we, funny. We are Giselle stands on this pod. Um, so long story short, I'm like, this just sounds super religious. Did I tell you then the pastor has to report that he's been cheating on his wife? Yes. He, I knew that, not because you Oh, okay. That, so yeah. he did this whole Instagram. And he, had he has kids, right? He has kids. The Who girl he came out. With? This Muslim. No. Yeah, this Muslim girl. Was she part of the church? No, he went up to her in a park. And they had this like affair, like six month affair. And then she basically came out like this Could guy's you imagine a fake. literally anyone coming up to you in a park. I'd be like, I'm getting kidnapped. This is yeah. the end. Get my affairs like, in this order. Is how sex trafficking happens. <laughs> Get if a man from me. and she said she was like reading, but that also seems so like rom com corny. What is he doing? Just like roaming around the park trying to find like women that are down to like clown? what he just spotted her and was like, She's really pretty. Let me end my marriage in this four seconds that I go up to this woman. Yeah, it's so strange. And she basically, like, exposed him. And he has not posted on Instagram since. And the, the church... He kicked out of being the He's pastor. kicked out, yeah. yeah. But So then you're like, okay, it's just a church. And, like, the priest did messed up shit. But then you look into it deeper. It turned out the dad of the founder of the church was a pedophile. And then his dad? No, the d he, there was a guy who actually was running it. Got it. And his dad started it was a pedophile. And then they had this college where they basically would make the kids like work unpaid. And oh. like they were and if they found out that they had had sex before or done drugs, they like treated them really bad. <sighs> I mean, it was lame. We've <laughs> seen like worse cults. Yeah. As like a cult um enthusiast. <laughs> You really are. It just seemed like very, very religious, but like very religious and cultish. The two extremes are a thin line. You wrote something on the the shared note about someone that was in a cult that I didn't. Jared Leto. Oh, so Jared Leto, people, he does this thing in Serbia where he invites like a ton of fans and they all wear white and he like gives speeches. So no. everyone's like, this is a cult. I actually tried on a wedding dress. That you thought you were Jared Leto. And I looked like Jared Leto in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> like, my hair down. I Honestly, Jared Leto's gorgeous, so that was a compliment Jared to Leto me. Jared Leto is very good looking. Stunning. But Jared Leto, I think people are going to find out more stuff about him, and it, he is... It's wild. Um, then, and okay. A, was a lead singer of a band, right? Yeah. What band? 30, 30 Seconds to Mars. Oh, Patrick. He's so useful sometimes. Then I watched a documentary about a nuclear explosion in <laughs> Pennsylvania. Your range <laughs> out of this world. Literally out of this world. It's on, I believe, Hulu. Yeah, there was a nuclear explosion in the eight, late 80s. Okay, When where? nuclear energy was new. Like a small town in in Pennsylvania. Nuclear energy is new. Everyone loves the nuclear plants they yeah, put. Everyone's working. Yeah. They love their new jobs. Like, it's great. Nuke. Great, for <laughs> great for the economy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I love nukes. And then one day, like, things start beeping. Yeah. Like, and 
shit went wrong and the first thing they do because it's a business was tell everyone like you're fine you're good yeah and white then lied white lie toxic white lies. white lies they're like everything happens for a reason <laughs> but people were like you'll tell us if it's affecting us right and they were like absolutely you're fine <laughs> and then they got to the point where they were like we might need to tell these people to evacuate but they want to evacuate people like that's millions of people so they were like we're just doing like a warning that we might tell you to evacuate and that's when people were like okay i'm not fucking waiting around for this and people started leaving wait y- when was this this is like late 80s like des remembered it okay <laughs> And he was like, yeah, the nuclear explosion of 87. Obviously. (laughs) So and I never heard of this, but the whole nuclear industry is freaking out because if they say people need to evacuate because something wrong happened in a nuclear plant, that means all the places that have nuclear plants are going to get scared. Yeah. So everyone's freaking out. And then did they evacuate? Yes. Okay. So that the everyone's in their hazmat suits like it's scary and it eventually goes to like a normal level but then they decide they want to like redo it and they have to long story short i'm not scientific enough to know and i did fall asleep towards the end (laughs) because it was like 2 a.m at that point but like basically there was a crazy nuclear almost explosion that happened it was crazy. Um, <laughs> so if you're into science, you like Elon Musk, all this stuff, watch this documentary. We're unsure what happens I don't the know end. if they lived or died. <laughs> so, Okay, my yeah. final one is insane. It's called, I think my first name is Steve. Okay. Or Steven. Okay. <laughs> I think my first name is Steve or Steven. And it's on, I'm going to say Hulu. You, I realize you have a lot of subscriptions. Honestly, at this point, we should just pay for cable because <laughs> I have 400 <laughs> subscriptions. Because I have Jazz's. You're watching it my, all. I'm watching it all. Because I, I, Do you ever life's log too on short. to something and you're like, who the fuck is Chelsea? Yeah. And you're like, you've been watching their shit for years. And you're yeah. like, I don't even know how I got well, this. Well, if you ever go to your Hulu and you see it's a ton of documentaries, you know who stole your login. Yeah. Um, this is fucking insane. This kid, Steven, one day, his mom is late to pick him up from work from at school and he disappears okay he's gone and they're telling the news the news is is so cute how old so it's important if the kid's cute if the kid's kid's ugly no one cares you're not he's not on the back of the milk carton Mm -hmm. (laughs) so he's so cute where is it you said i said how old (laughs) (laughs) we don't listen to each other (laughs) um he's seven okay and california okay then they f- the news finally stops reporting on him and like he's gone and he has like four siblings and they are just distraught. He's just gone missing from school. Gone. Okay. Wow. I want to watch this. Turns out I, I c- can I tell you what happens? Sure. It's really crazy. <laughs> I think that's why we're here. Okay. If you're if you want to watch it, watch it now without the spoilers because when I tell you crazy shit happened, crazy shit happened. Okay. So I'll try to keep it general. So turns out a man took him and brought him to like a small town in california that people like an ocean town or some shit and just raised the kid like normal told the kid his parents don't want him anymore that he's legally his dad now like he wanted a son and they interview people who knew him at school and his name they changed his name to dennis so his name was Dennis, and the kid just kind of got brainwashed that, like, his parents don't want him. His name's Dennis now. So Dennis fully just lived as a kidnapped kid, going to school, playing with his friends. <gasps> that was it. And he was too young to, like... What year was this? Like, when was this? The 80s, I think. Does Des remember? Probably. Yeah. The 80s are crazy. <laughs> Des knows all about it. Then, fast forward, he's, like, 13 on the football team. He was getting kind of too close with people, and he moved him again. And then you realize, like, he's getting assaulted by this guy. So he's in a very abusive, fucked up sexual relationship. Trigger warning after. Trigger warning before (laughs) it. Um, (laughs) So then one day he comes home and there's a little kid there. And he goes, this is your new brother. (gasps) Because clearly he He aged aged out. out. And suddenly, for whatever reason... He had convinced himself that this is where he belongs, but he knew deep down this kid is going to go through what I went through and I don't want him to. And during the night, he picked up this kid, put him on his shoulders and just started walking 
and like left and they got someone to pick him up and the kid told him like the town he lived in brought him to the police station and the police station goes we're looking for you also and he goes what and he goes i think my name is steve I'm literally getting goosebumps telling this right now. And they bring him back to his family and he's this hero, like town hero. Cause he not only saved this kid's life, but seven years later, he's not dead. He's alive. Steve is here. But then they get so much press because the media loves this like yeah. beautiful hero moment. And the kid hasn't even processed what he's went through. He didn't tell anyone about the abuse. He's just like, yeah, I just live there. I'm fine. I didn't go through anything. Like they'll, in school, when he'd get out of school, they'd ask him how he's doing with his friends. Like it was like too much media. Yeah. And I'm like, what's it like to not want all this attention? <laughs> <laughs> Paige is like, can I have their PR? Like what, who's... <laughs> He's in the news headlines every morning. Okay, so every day, someone was asking. Him. What kind of news outlets do they? <laughs> His outfit he chose for the day. So, and the parents, they say looking back, like, we wish we didn't give every interview, but it was such like, a great story. And the dad says that he doesn't want to put him in therapy. Why? It's always the dad. He, like, didn't believe. I know, it's always a fucking stupid dad. No offense, dads. <laughs> stupid. So he... He actually, like, he's a little naughty for a bit, like, a little drugs, whatever, nothing yeah. t too bad. And then he falls in love with a girl he met, and they have a family. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so beautiful. And he's, like, 24. And they say, we want to do a film about your life, like a Hollywood film, a TV film. It wins an Emmy. It's great. He, like, took the money. He bought a, a motorcycle with the money. He's, like, loving life. And then in his motorcycle, he got hit by a car and died. What the at 24 Hannah so these people spent their whole lives waiting for him to come back he came home finally got his shit together and gets killed the story's not over the story's not over so fast forward this poor family these girls die at Yosemite Park mm -hmm. and they're like this is crazy and then another girl dies at Yosemite Park, and they're like, this is crazy. And their brother works at Yosemite Park. Their brother becomes a serial killer. And so starts, mur I'm laughing because of Paige's face. The brother that, that, he s that Steven saved? No, the brother that was older than Steven in the family and was always like in the background. And people either- Became a serial People killer? were either like, he got fucked up by it and felt like he never got attention and like wanted to like get a better story than Steve. Or they think he always was unwell and the dad never got him the help he needed. So he ended up murdering three women and then on the death penalty and the family, they interview the family and they're like, w w the, the fact that any of this happened in one person's lifetime is insane. So oh that's why God. I kind of gave everything away. You don't really have to no, watch it. I'm actually terrified to watch it now, and I won't be watching it. But so that's insane. White lies sometimes are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, that just threw me for a loop. I can't believe the guy died. No, it was so traumatizing that I had to re-traumatize it on you. Yeah, you needed to, like, give it get to it. someone. Yeah. Get it out of you. <laughs> Is that toxic? <laughs> anyway. Giving, I just, I have to give it to someone now. Yeah, go tell Craig afterward. <laughs> um, so, anyway, thanks for getting like that. <laughs> that was super fun. Sorry to kind of ruin the mood. I mean, if you want someone to right ruin. Right before your wedding? <laughs> my wedding week oh my Dude, god if anyone wants to hire a vibe killer i'm available <laughs> all week long until she my wedding got mitzvahs and sweet 16 um everyone report to instagram that Paige is shadow blocked and try to fix it because i need her to have premium content for my wedding it won't stop me it won't stop instagram's trying to stop my wedding um and yeah we love you guys so much thanks for giggling with us yeah, follow us on instagram we did hit a hundred thousand no big deal Probably because I was shadow banned. Because Paige was shadow banned, so we had to step it up. <laughs> anyway, love you guys. Talk, giggle. Bye. <laughs> giggle with you later. <laughs>